All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to VBS night number four. This is crazy that we are already here. We've got a huge line of kiddos that have school supplies that are waiting to drop their school supplies off and get checked in. So there's going to be a bunch more coming. All right. We're well on our way to a thousand and based on the lineup of kids that are waiting to get drop off school supplies we might get there so how about we still do a little bit more singing while we wait for your friends to come in so miss denise worship team why don't you come up here Let's let's do two songs while we wait for or while we wait for our friends to come in while we wait for our virtual friends to log on and join in. Uh, so let's do "He Comforts Us" and "Not Forgotten." Okay, so we'll just do "He Comforts Us" first and then "Not Forgotten" right after that. I won't even say anything between songs. Okay, ready to sing? Oh, come on, that was lame. You ready to sing? Okay. This is a newer one. You can do it. Give some high fives. He comforts us. So we can comfort others the same way he does. He comforts us. Good job. Come on. I think you still have a little more volume in you. There you go. There you go. Come on. Nicely done. All right. All right. You know this one. I better hear a little volume come out of you. Come on, fifth graders! I am 
Come on. There you go. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. He knows my name. There you go. He knows my name. Good job. Go ahead and take a seat. All right. So we're on night number four. We have to do a little bit of quick review. Well, first of all, let me ask this. Raise your hand if you have been to all four nights of VBS. Raise your hand. That is amazing. All right. Okay. So think way back to four nights ago. What was our Bible point? What? What was our... I got to get back down there. I'm too far away from all of you. All right. The very first Bible point was what, Miss Penny? Um, God. God listens to us. That wasn't the first night, but that's one of them. What was the very first night, Miss Brooklyn? God knows us. God knows us. Very good. God knows us. Then night number two, night number two was? God listens to us. Yes. Night number two was God listens to us, right? God knows us. Because he knows us, he listens to us, right? He knows everything about us, so when we come and we talk to him, he listens to us, he hears us, okay? And then last night, because he knows us and because he hears us, he does what, Crystal? He comforts us. He comforts us. Very good. Tonight, we're talking about how God forgives us. Have you ever done have have you ever done anything where you've had to go up to someone and say, "I'm sorry, will you forgive me?" Any anybody? We all have had to do that, right? The Bible calls that sin. Well, tonight we're going to talk about how Jesus how Jesus offers to forgive us of all of our sin. Okay? So that's the Bible point tonight. God forgives us. All right? But before we get into our Bible buddy or doing any more singing or Bible lesson, we have to have our time to talk about God sightings, okay? Our, our treasure chest is getting really bedazzled with jewels, but it's still got lots more room. So get in your cruise. Let's spend about three minutes talking about our God sightings.
Kindergarten first. Take about one more minute, okay? Talk about how you've seen God today. Even our worship team is having their time talking about their God sightings. One more minute. All right, crew leaders, hold on, hold on, hold on. Crew leaders, make sure you give one person a jewel. And if you have a jewel, kids, come set it right along the edge of the stage. And we'll glue it to, we'll, there you go. Good job, good job. I'll step out of the way. Just put it right on the edge of the stage. Very good. Look at all those God sightings. That's amazing. Good job. All right. Very good, very good. Okay, I have to hear about some of your God sightings. We've got lots of jewels up here that show us that you guys have seen God today somewhere or uh, in the last couple days. Tell me what some of your God sightings... Shh. Tell me what some of your God sightings are, okay? Um, so I have a babysitter, and we got to go to her house. Awesome. Just getting to spend time at babysitter's house that was fun, enjoyable, treated you kindly, right? Okay. Let's see here. Eli, what's your God sighting? Um... Today, um, I bought school supplies for people who um, didn't have it, and um, that reminded me of God because he gives us stuff. Wonderful. That's very good. Yep. When we're generous, it reminds us of God's generosity to us. All right. Let's see. I got to come over to yesterday's birthday boy. Joseph, what you got for a God sighting? I saw a rainbow. 
Oh, very cool. All right. Okay, what's the rainbow mean? It means God promised to not flood the earth anymore. Yes, very good. The rainbow is God's promise. All right, God's promise that he's not going to flood the earth again. All right, let me see. We'll do one more God sighting. Let's come over here to Maisie. What's yours? I got to play with a friend today. Getting to play with a friend. All of those like interactions that you have with your friends, those can remind us of God because God tells us it's good for us to be in relationship with other people, to not be alone. So anytime you play with friends, it can be a reminder of what God tells us in the Bible. Very good. Those are some awesome God sightings. All right, well, now it is time to meet our Bible buddy. All right? So we have had, we have had Pogo, right? And then who was the second one? Ruby, and then yesterday we met Wilder. Today we are going to meet Grace. Let's meet Grace. Wow, look at all these priceless people. What a valuable find. This is Grace, a giant blue morpho butterfly. Check out her beautiful blingy blue wings. But to be honest, she didn't always look this lovely. After hatching, she grew into a fuzzy, fluffy caterpillar. Those bristly hairs would irritate your skin, which helped keeps her safe. Grace ate loads of leaves as a furry caterpillar. She got so big that she shed her skin about four times. That's just how God made her. Finally, God put a little green shell-shaped cocoon around Grace. Then she just hung out in the rainforest for a couple of weeks. In fact, if you trekked through a rainforest from Mexico, through parts of South America, you might see rows of these bright green cocoons hanging from the underside of leaves. And then, voila! Look at her, what a transformation! She's completely new. Instead of crawling, Grace can float and flutter on her big, beautiful wings. You can see that the top side is shimmery blue, like the sky. That's actually reflecting the light and color from the sky. How cool is that? The underside is brown, so it blends in with the branches and leaves around her. That's just another way God keeps Grace safe. Her flashing, fluttering, multicolored wings make it harder for predators to keep track of where she is. Grace could just sing about her wings. When she stretches them out, they're about as wide as a grown-up's hand. Grace's life has changed so much from when she was a little fuzzy caterpillar. You may feel like growing up from a kid to an adult is the biggest change in your life, but God can change you in ways you never imagined. See, when you make wrong choices, those hurt your friendship with God. But God treasured you so much that he made a way to change that forever. God sent his son, Jesus, to take the punishment for your wrongdoings. Now that those sins are paid for, you can have a new life forever with God. God's forgiveness makes you a new creation. The Bible celebrates God's loving forgiveness with these words. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. God loves you, forgives you, changes you. So if you're bugged by your bad choices and feel stuck in them forever, remember that God's forgiveness can change you forever. God forgives you. You are treasured. Very good. There we are. Very good. So, Grace, her transformation from a fuzzy caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly is a reminder of how God makes our hearts new when we accept the death of Jesus as 
the payment for our sin. So that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what the lessons are all about today. All right? Understanding how much God loves you that he would send Jesus to die on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. All right? Now, before we transition to our Bible adventure time, let's stand up and sing one more time as our opportunity to move a little bit before our Bible adventures time. Let's do the song, Sing Wherever I Go. Because when we remember how much God loves us and treasures us, it makes us want to sing. All right? So let's sing wherever we go. Sing it out. You got more than that. Come on. Come on. You got more. Mountain high, valley low. I'm going to sing wherever I go. There you go. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Lots of energy. Let me hear it. Come on. Valley low. I'm going to sing wherever I go. All right, here comes the part. Come on. Deep down in your soul. What? There you go. And you're going to sing wherever you go. Come on, come on, come on. Wherever I go. There you go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All my life, all Come on, here's your big end, let's go. Good job, everybody. All right. Thank you, worship team. All right. Take a seat inside your square. All right. It's time for us to have our Bible adventure with Miss Carrie Ann. Let's turn our attention, our eyes, our ears to Miss Carrie Ann. They're all yours. What are we doing up here? Reading the Bible. Very good, this book. And our stories so far have been in the Old Testament. Did you know that the Bible is broken up into two parts? What are those parts? Very good, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so far, all of our stories have come from the Old Testament, but not today. It's the New Testament. That's right. What does the Old Testament tell us? We learn this in kicks all the time, right? What does the Old Testament tell us?
It tells us some, but everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus, right? And what does the New Testament tell us? That's what the Old Testament tells us, that Jesus is coming. Emily? That Jesus is here. It talks about all of the, all about the times when Jesus is here. So guess what today we're talking about? Yeah. Jesus. Right? You got it. Good job. Jesus. And we're going to talk about Jesus' friend. So when Jesus lived on earth, he had some friends. He spent a lot of time with these friends. There were 12 of them. Who are they? Oh, disciples. That's what they, right. They were the disciples. Yes, he had 12 good friends, but he had some friends or one friend in particular that he was really close with. And his name was Peter. Yeah. Have you heard of Peter before? So these men walked around and heard Jesus talking and they saw the miracles that he performed, and they saw all of these wonderful things that he did. They talked together. They laughed together. Can you imagine Jesus laughing? Wouldn't you love to hear that sound? They laughed together. They became really close friends. So, we're going, as I tell this story, I'm going to have you guys moving. So I want you to stand up, and your leaders are going to help you make a line right through your square, we'll call it. Right through your square. Yep, a nice line. One line. Whoa. We have been out of school too long. We cannot make a line. <laughs> oh, kindergartners have it. Sixth graders. Nice job. And leaders, remember, I want you to be closer to me facing your crews. Very good. So just like she is. Yep. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to tell the story, but I'm not going to I'm not going to talk loud. So you're going to have to be quiet so you can hear. Okay? And this is what you're going to do. Are you ready? Okay. So when I tell the story, you have to decide if Peter was being a good friend, then you're going to take a step forward closer to your leader. If Jesus was being hurtful, I'm sorry, did I say Jesus? Oh, Peter. If Peter was being a good friend to Jesus, he was being helpful, you're going to take a step towards your leader. If Peter was hurtful or did something that was hurtful, you're going to take a step backwards. If it was so hurtful that they might not ever be friends again, you could take two steps backwards. Okay? If for some reason you touch a wall or something, just go ahead and sit down and turn around and face the wall. Okay? Are you ready? Here we go. All right. Jesus asked Peter and the rest of his friends to have a special meal with him in Jerusalem, and Peter came. Is that helpful or hurtful? Helpful, so step forward. Very good. After the meal, Jesus asked Peter and the other friends to pray with him in the garden, and they agreed. Helpful or hurtful? Very good, very good. But Peter and the other friends were tired. So instead of praying, they fell asleep. Mm -hmm. 
But guess what? Jesus came to them again and asked them to pray, and they fell asleep again. Then Peter woke up to find that the soldiers had come to arrest Jesus. So Peter pulled out his sword to protect Jesus. Good job, guys. The soldiers led Jesus away, and Peter followed to find out what happened. As Peter waited for the news, someone asked, G asked Peter if Jesus was his friend, and Peter said, no. Two more times Peter told people he didn't even know Jesus. Finally, Peter ran away and left Jesus. Jesus let himself be battered and beaten. And then he was nailed to the cross where everyone could see him die. Jesus was paying the price for all of the wrong that we have done and will ever do. That's a pretty high price to pay, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're not sure if Peter was somewhere in the crowd watching, but if he was, he did not try to help Jesus. After Jesus died, Peter and the rest of Jesus' friends hid in Jerusalem. There, they heard Jesus had come back to life just as he said he would. Peter wondered if this could be true. Was Jesus alive? You think he was? Yeah. Guys, look at how far away from your leaders you are. You're pretty far, aren't you? Yeah. All right, come back and sit down. What do you think about Peter's relationship with Jesus? Did there was there a big separation? Was Peter separated from Jesus? He was. Guess what, guys? That's sin, isn't it? Yeah, sin separates us from God. Well, don't worry, because the story doesn't end there. Eight days later, Peter and most of the other followers were all gathered together in a room. And guess what? Somehow, Jesus walked into the room alive what was he alive. yeah well maybe Peter Peter was in the room and do you think he wondered oh I hurt my best friend will you he ever forgive me do you think that maybe Peter could have wondered that when Jesus walked in alive yeah he maybe wondered that well guess what a few days after that, Jesus walked to Peter, who was fishing, and he asked him to spend time with him. They ate together, and they treated Peter, Jesus treated Peter as a friend again. Do you think they were friends again? Yeah, they were. Jesus even gave Peter an important job to do. He asked him to tell other people about him. Jesus wanted Peter to tell him, tell others all about what he did for him. Jesus forgave Peter. And guess what? That Remember how far we were separated from your leaders? And p how far Peter separated from Jesus? When he forgave him, they weren't separated anymore. And we can have the same thing. We can be close to God. Our sin doesn't have to separate us. 
All those wrong things we do don't separate us from God. Isn't that exciting? It is. So, oh no, I lost my stick. Can I have a stick? Oh, wait, here it is. Found it. Okay. In a little bit, you're going to get one of these sticks. And you're going to meet together in your cruise. And you're going to talk about a time in your life when a friend hurt you. When you were hurt by a friend. Now, should we use our friend's name? No. We're not going to call our friends out. We're just going to talk about the time that it happened. Okay? So, for example, there was a time in my life when I had made these big plans with my friends. They were big plans. Like, I changed jobs because of it, and I had this whole plan to do some big things with my friends. And then they decided they didn't want to do those things with me anymore. Guess what happened to our relationship? It got broken. Okay, so I want you to turn right now and talk in your cruise about a time that maybe happened to you. Nope, I was, look at that. I didn't make it. Make sure you're breaking your sticks when you think about a time a friend hurt you. Come back, turn to me. Do you have your sticks broken? Yep, if you didn't have a chance to tell your leader about a time a friend hurt you, you can just think of it in your mind and break your stick. Okay? So let me ask you this question, guys. When a friend, when a friend truly hurts you, what does it take to make things right? When a friend truly hurts you, what does it make to, what does it take to make things right? Yes. Make, you just make a new friend. What else? What does it take to make repair a friendship? Oh, did you all hear that? I don't think you heard that. And I don't think it's because he wasn't talking loud enough. I think we weren't listening. To forgive. He suggested we forgive. To play with them. Asher.
So how did did Yeah. Well, how else can we forgive or <laughs> how else can we repair that friendship? Nice and loud because all these kids are talking. You Yep, you could try that, Sela. Loud. Love of God, show them the love of God or through God's love. Right? Through God's love, you can forgive them. Yes, last one, Gwendolyn. I'm sorry that happened to you. All right, guys. So think about this. Friendships can be repaired through forgiveness. So you, your leaders have little glue dots that you can put on your sticks. So you can make this. What does it look like? It looks like a cross. Who forgives us? God forgives us, and because he forgives us, what should we do? Forgive others. Leaders, you can go ahead and put the glue sticks, or put the glue dots on, and then they can go up. When you have mended your cross or your friendship when you've repaired it you can take it up to the cross over here Go take it over by Pastor Jamie. He'll help you get it on that cross. When you're done, come back and sit down. These crosses look amazing. Look at all this forgiveness. Make sure you're going back to the right square. That was a good idea.
All right, guys. Do you want to hear some good news? Do you want to hear some good news? Okay, well, here's the good news. Are you ready? Okay. When you come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness, he forgives you. You are treasured. That's right. Because Jesus paid the penalty for all of the wrong things we've done and all of the wrong things we could ever do, we just have to come to him and ask for forgiveness. Guess what? That's not just good news. That's the best news. Guys, when we ask Jesus for forgiveness, we can be with him forever. How long? Forever. Okay, so before we go, let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come and gather here. Lord, look at these crosses. Each and every one of the crosses that is all the small crosses that are on that big cross, Lord, came from a child, a precious child that you kn you know, Lord, and you hear them, and you comfort them, and you forgive them, Lord. And I pray that they would ask for your forgiveness, that they would understand that all of the bad, wrong choices we make separate us from you, Lord. All of the wrong choices that I make separate me from you, Lord. But when I ask for forgiveness and I turn back to you and I repent, I'm forgiven. Lord, and all these children are forgiven too, and I thank you for that. I pray that you would help us to have a great evening and that we would come back safely tomorrow. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So we have one more day, one more Bible adventure, and you don't want to miss it. Are you going to miss it? No. I don't know if you know this, Pastor Jamie. Uh-oh. We have a surprise guest tomorrow. Ooh, a surprise guest tomorrow. Oh, boy. All right. Well, our Bible adventure time took a little bit longer. So leaders, if you just want to aim to get back in here by, by 8.15 or so, it's a little less than an hour, so it'll be a tight window, but we can push our closing assembly back to 8.15, all right? Uh, so let's get you off to your groups. So let's have third graders stand up. Let's have, let's have sixth graders stand up. Second graders, you guys can stand up right behind Miss Tammy. Kindergartners, line up. Line up behind Miss Andrea. Fifth graders, stand up. Fifth graders.